Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com. It's Tuesday, September 5th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. The St. Louis region has seen a 60 percent increase in the number of Indian immigrants over the last decade. We didn't know anything about St. Louis. We had no family here. We just Googled and (laughs) trusted the reviews of strangers and uh, came here. Coming up, St. Louis Public Radio's Andrea Henderson asks people from India why they want to stay in St. Louis. And immigrants from India, along with other countries, are in line for more local support. St. Louis plans to open the Office of New Americans to help with city services and business opportunities. Mayor Tashara Jones proposed the office in response to the growing number of immigrants. City officials also will work with immigrant organizations and agencies to implement better policies for newcomers. Ariel Benson is president of the International Institute of St. Louis. We have to create those opportunities for them. Uh, The more we do that, the more they feel like this is home. Even their investments become investments for this community. Oh, Benson says the office could help immigrants play a bigger role in the community. Arab American groups are applauding a new Illinois law that will add a Middle Eastern or North African box under the race category on state forms. Advocates say the law, signed by Governor J.B. Pritzker, opens the door for more funding opportunities. State Representative Abdel Nasser Rashid, who is Palestinian, says the pandemic is one reason the category is needed. We didn't have the data to let us know the vaccination rates, the mortality rates, um, comorbidities within the Arab community. And and that absence of data really impacted our ability to deliver um, public health services. That impacted all of us. The requirement goes into effect in July 2025. The Biden administration is considering adding a Middle Eastern or North African category for the 2030 census. Alton High School students are returning to class today after multiple fights led administrators to keep students home Thursday and Friday. St. Louis Public Radio's Kate Grumke reports on how the community wants to move forward. In Alton on Friday night, a football game would usually fill the neighborhood around the stadium. But in response to the violence last week, only district staff and families of the students on the field were allowed to attend the game. Florida Foster's son is on the football team. Moving forward, she wants teachers and parents to pay closer attention to students. I think a lot of it stems from trauma. You know, something going on in the home or something that has that had already happened or something that trickled down from the parents down to the, to the children. The district is planning to increase security measures starting this week. That will include adding metal detectors and more staff in halls between classes. I'm Kate Grumke, St. Louis Public Radio. St. Louis University Hospital registered nurses have voted overwhelmingly in favor of a strike. They've been in contract talks with SSM Health since May. The main issues include recruiting and retaining experienced nurses and a high turnover rate. The union says the vacancy rate for registered nurse positions at the hospital has been more than 30 percent since last year. Members would give management at least 10 days notice if the bargaining team calls a strike. Congress is unlikely to meet a September 30th deadline to pass a new farm bill. The package sets crucial policy for food assistance and crop insurance. As Harvest Public Media's Elizabeth Rempert reports, Congress still needs to decide how much money to spend on the bill. As the clock ticks closer to the farm bill's deadline, some in Congress are pushing to cut long-standing ag subsidies. Others are demanding higher payments for farmers. It all boils down to one thing. It's unclear how much the farm bill will cost. Illinois Congressman Mike Bost, a Republican, says he's hoping for a bill in line with recent years. The most budget neutral as possible and still maintain the integrity, but understand that realistically we know that it's going to be more expensive. Because of inflation and shifting crop prices, one estimate predicts that even without any changes, the 2023 farm bill would top $1 trillion for the first time ever. For Harvest Public Media, I'm Elizabeth Rembert.
A growing number of people from India are making the St. Louis region home. The U.S. Census says the area's Indian population has increased by nearly 60 percent over the past decade. Indians have surpassed the Mexican population and are now the region's fastest growing group. St. Louis Public Radio's Andrea Henderson reports. Sneha Rajan just got home from teaching her Monday morning political science class at St. Louis Community College. As she walked into her two-story home in Sunset Hills, there is an array of colorful, fresh flowers arranged in a medium-sized circle right at the entryway. This is our flower carpet. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's cute. It's um, something called Ornam, uh-huh. which is a harvest festival in India. Rajan is from Kerala, India. She came to St. Louis from the United Arab Emirates two years ago with her family. We didn't know anything about St. Louis. We had no family here. We just Googled trusted the reviews of strangers and uh, came here. She says St. Louis is an ideal place for immigrants to start a new life. Rajin quickly found community within local Indian and other immigrant organizations and later became the Indian Outreach Coordinator for the St. Louis Mosaic Project. There is the warmth and kindness and there's, like we know, a strong immigrant community here, Indians, Chinese, Hispanic community. And that's also very telling of the locals that they are welcoming. Rajin is among a wave of Indians who have immigrated to the St. Louis area in recent years. In 2021, there were nearly 18,000, up from about 11,000 a decade earlier. Many of them flocked to the recent Festival of Nations at Tower Grove Park, where Indian bands took the stage. The majority of them are, are coming here to St. Louis because of some of the Fortune 500 businesses that are in St. Louis that are really hiring, particularly in the IT field, um, that India as a country has really made that their craft. That's Ario Benson, president of the International Institute of St. Louis. He says many Indians are arriving on work or student visas. The Institute is focusing more on cultural programming and events that appeal to immigrants to make them want to stay. Archie Sharma remembers when St. Louis's Indian community was small and didn't offer much to remind her of home. Some of the items that we are very used to using back home, it was hard to get them here. Um, so then, you know, when our parents would travel or somebody would be coming from India, we'll tell them, hey, can you bring this from India for us? Sharma is vice president of business operations at MasterCard. She moved to St. Louis from New Delhi in 2000. She lived in a hotel for a bit until moving to the Maryland Heights area. That's where she found a few temples and grocery stores and others from her homeland. Over the past 20 years, she's grown to love the art scene in St. Louis. She loves the convenience of living in a mid-sized city and wants to stay in the area. Sharma performs Punjabi folk dances and Bollywood numbers with her dance troupe across the region to teach St. Louisans about Indian culture. At the Festival of Nations, 30-year-old Hamin Dalal couldn't stop dancing to an Indian artist he heard over loudspeakers at Tower Grove Park. It reminds him of India. It's a really nice song, the music, and it's it's really popular over there right now. That feels so, like, exciting. Din, din, din. Dalal is a network engineer from Gujarat, India. He came to the United States to go to college in Cleveland, but moved to O'Fallon in 2018 for work. He didn't know anyone at first, but he says the many cultural events and Indian festivals have kept him here. I was going to uh, events happening around here, getting involved much. Uh, so you feel like homely over here uh, because you, you're you getting to do stuff, what you do over there. Not in like that big scale, but something is better than nothing. Many Indian immigrants say St. Louis is home now. They plan to bring relatives and friends to live in the place that welcomed them. I'm Andrea Henderson, St. Louis Public Radio. Our David Kosser has edited that report. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. 
Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.